Greetings, friends, and welcome to church. My name is Pastor Bruce Dickerson, and I'm the lead pastor at Jerome Church. We're so happy that you've decided to join us for worship this day. Today, we're going to be continuing our sermon series, A Graceful Life, and it's based off a book by Wes Olds and George Acevedo. Uh, and the full title of the book is A Graceful Life, God's All-Reaching, Soul-Saving, Character-Shaping, Never-Ending Love. This is the final week of this particular sermon series based off themes from this book, uh, and it's been an exciting journey. Uh, so we hope you'll join us for our next All Church study and the next series to come. Let's now come together and praise and worship this day. Oh, <laughs> 
loved I strayed And yet in love he sought me And on his shoulder gently laid And home rejoicing brought me In death's dark veil I fear no ill But be dear Lord beside me Thy rod and staff my comfort still the cross before to guide me never failing ruler of my heart everlasting lover of my soul on the mountain high or in the valley low the king of love my shepherd is the king of love my shepherd friends, I'm Jordan Yost and I'm the elementary coordinator here at Jerome Church. Do you ever stop and think about how big God must be? God created the whole world, all of the plants and the stars in the sky. God is really big. Knowing God is big can make us feel small and not very important. But the truth is, even the small things are a big deal to God. This month, Jerome kids are learning together about the story of Job, which will help us realize that even though we are small, God is big. Today, kids are learning about the big idea that God listens when we have big feelings. Each Sunday, kids can access our weekly kids' worship and videos on demand on the Jerome Church YouTube channel, in the Jerome Kids Facebook group, and in the Church Center app. This on-demand video resource is a way for kids to begin and continue their learning at home and stay connected to our kids. Jerome kids, leaders, and staff. Kids can still join in the large group Zoom time at 10.30 a.m. on Sundays, and we are also offering in-person programming for kids ages 0 through 5th grade on Sunday mornings during our 9 a.m. and 10.30 in-person worship services. Our team can't wait to learn more about the story of Job and our great big God together. Now let's hear a message from Pastor Bruce about God's never-ending love for us. Would you pray with me, friends? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. Our scripture lesson for today can be found in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 38 through 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, 
neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As I mentioned in the opening, we're going to conclude our series, A Graceful Life, but I want to look back at the first three weeks to see what we've talked about a little bit. We've been talking about what they refer to in the book as seasons of grace, uh, different types or different faces of God, and when we may experience God's one umbrellaing grace that goes from the, uh, the womb to the tomb, if you will, uh, and our experiences of this one's God's grace. These were, Wesley would say, the Wesleyan understanding. Uh, John Wesley, the founder of United Methodism, the, the Wesleyan understanding of grace. So in the first week, we talked about an even there God. And we discussed prevenient grace, the grace that goes before us, our God's all-reaching love, that God knows everything about us, and God made us, and is everywhere we go, oftentimes and always preceding us there before we even realizing it. And God, we have a God that's even there and can handle our ugly, the ugliness of our feelings and emotions, that yes, we have grace and we have love in this world, but we also have violence and revenge and sadness and anger and all those things. And God can handle all of that through there being the even there kind of God, uh, the provenient grace. God's all-reaching love. The second week, we started to discuss an even-now God and what we uh, call justifying grace, uh, the God's soul-saving love. Now, something amazing happens when we come face-to-face -face with Jesus, and we suddenly discover that a personal relationship happens, and God wants to give us friendship, and God wants to give us forgiveness. And God wants to give us a future that's better than the plans we have for our, our, ourselves. And we experience God's justifying grace. We come face to face with Jesus at the cross. And we say, yes, I want this relationship. In the third week, we discussed an even more God. And we talked about sanctifying grace, that God's character-shaping love now, this is a grace that is loving us on to the true intention of the Christian heart, uh, a heart that can be completed or made perfect, uh, to actually live a life in loving God and loving neighbor in all we do. Now, it's the love that moves us from and helps us live into the tension of the world, uh, that tension of a life living and loving God and loving neighbor and our brokenness, the tension between our old sinful nature and this future reality of Christian perfection. Now this week we're going to talk about an even when God. And this grace is often referred to as perfecting grace or glorifying grace. You can actually find in the United Methodist hymnal uh, a subcategory where it talks about sanctifying and perfecting grace. In older hymnals, it's referred to as glorifying grace. Now, God's never-ending love. Glorifying grace is that which works in us forever and ever. John Wesley and many others have referred to it as perfecting grace. You see, we believe that our journey of sanctification, right or wrong, ultimately leads us to death's door. Because at the end of our lives, God's arm is not short. God actually woos and leads us, reaches out to us and takes us by the hand through the veil of death as we graduate from this life temporal to what we refer to as that life eternal. We will experience even when I die glorifying grace. It's our homecoming day when we will finally see Jesus truly face to face. It's this grace that Paul writes 
to the Romans about in our scripture lesson from today. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angel nor demon, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And remember, we're defining that grace as God's love for all of creation. We can't outrun it. We can't hide from it. It's everywhere we go. It leads us. God's all-encompassing grace. This grace is also the grace that the Apostle Paul has in mind when he writes to his young friend Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Friends, we've got to talk about certain realities today. Someday we all will die. Currently, life does have a 100% mortality rate. We're going to die. However, how we die and how we face this reality says a lot about our faith. You see, we as Christians are not a people who need to fear death. Let me say that again. We as Christians are not a people who need to fear death. Whether it comes to us suddenly or It comes to us in a long, drawn-out illness. Regardless of how our death comes, we do not need to fear it. You see, we as Christians are to live confidently in Christ now because we know when we die, we will live completely in Christ then. Let me say that again for you. We as Christians are to live confidently in Christ now because we know that when we die, we will live completely in Christ then. Now, how do we show that we live confidently in Christ now? Well, we heed the words that Paul said to Timothy, he's kind of writing what we believe the final letter to Timothy. He's in prison in Rome, and he knows he's going to die. And he pretty much says, I'm ready. I have fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. I had run my race, the race that was before me, to the finish. And see, we need to do the same thing. We need to continue to fight the good fight. We know of the mission ahead of us, that we're to love God and love neighbor and to make disciples, that we're supposed to bring kingdom moments here on earth. God is depending on you, not because he needs us, because we are part of God's plan. So we need to fight the good fight. And and those times where we're just not sure, or we do have fear, or that we are struggling, we need to keep the faith. We need to keep the faith that we know the battle for our salvation has been won. Christ won that fight. He won and paid the price for our sin. He paid the penalty for our sin, which is death, and then he overcame it. On the resurrection day, on the day that we call Easter, Christ overcame the sting of death. And we keep our faith that God's grace is enough for our salvation, shown through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we fight the good fight. We keep the faith. We keep going until our race is finished. Which means we're going to leave it all 
on the field, to use a sports analogy. Uh, we're going to love God every opportunity we can. We're going to love our neighbor every opportunity we can. We are going to go and make disciples and tell the story of how Christ has changed our lives, how God's grace has changed and transformed us, as the Holy Spirit continues to guide us and change us and transform us, convict us, move us. We leave it all on the field for Jesus, for God, for the Holy Spirit. And we do this not to earn our salvation, but out of our confidence of what Christ has already done. Friends, someday we're all going to die. But how we face our death, and more importantly, how we face our life as Christians says something about our faith, about our beliefs. So go forward this day experiencing all of God's one grace and all the experiences that we have within a pervenient, justifying, sanctifying, and glorifying grace and be confident as a Christian Live confidently in Christ now. And remember, we're able to do that. We're able to live confidently in Christ now because we know when we die, we will live completely in Christ then. We have nothing to fear. May it be so. Thanks be to God. Amen.
It's good to be with you in worship today. My name is Sarah Merriweather and I am the Executive Director here at Jerome. Today we are concluding our worship and study series, Graceful. Over the past few weeks, we've been learning together about God's grace through our weekly worship times together and through connecting to small groups for study and growth. I invite you right now to open up your Church Center app during these next few minutes so that you can connect to the tools for ministry and missions here at Jerome. If you don't have the app yet, you can scan the QR code that's on the screen and follow the instructions below to connect with us. While you're in the app, I want to encourage you to check in to worship or complete your Connect card today. You can also find the link to complete a Connect card in today's video description. If you missed out on joining a small group for the study, I want to encourage you to check out the resources available to you for free on Amplify Media, where you can access the graceful video resources on your own at any time by visiting the church's Amplify site and logging into your account or creating a new account using our unique congregation code, SJYTPK. You can find more information on how to access Amplify Media in the Church Center app on our website, and in your weekly email. For the month of October, our mission's focus is the Thanksgiving dinner at the Church for All People, which will be held the week of Thanksgiving. We're joined now by a few members of our mission team to tell us more about this opportunity. Hello, Church. My name is Michelle Blackburn, the missions coordinator here at Jerome. I'm here today with Todd Bowman, who is our on-site ministry coordinator that has helped us build a long-standing partnership with Church for All People. We are so excited about this upcoming Thanksgiving as we provide a warm meal to our friends at Church for All People on the south side of Columbus. As you can imagine, it takes many hands and hearts to make this a success. If this is the first time that you're hearing about this ministry, this is one way that the people of Jerome Church can live out our mission, love people, love God. Each week, Jerome Church serves a meal down at the Church for All People for uh, the, our friends that we've come to know over the years. This, this ministry has helped us build many friendships along the way. Every year, for about 20 years now, Jerome Church has provided a Thanksgiving meal to our friends at Church for All People. If you're familiar with this ministry, you know that in the past, we usually have 30 to 40 people go down and serve a restaurant style meal to these people. Due to COVID guidelines, uh, we will not be able to do that this year. This year, we will serve a meal of about 15 people. Volunteers will provide to-go containers for people that come through on a walk-up or a drive-through basis. We will also need servers to help get stuff ready before we go, and we'll need some help cleaning up when we get back. This will take place Monday, November 22nd, from 5 to 7 at the Fresh Market across the street. This ministry changes the lives of many people that we serve. Um, not only the ones that we serve, but as mine and the people that have served in the past. Many people have come up to me and praised God for the fact that we've been able to provide this meal for them. During the summer, people come to me and say, are you going to bring Thanksgiving meal again? This is the best meal that we get every year. Other people have come up in tears saying that this was the only way that they would be able to provide a meal for their family. So anything that you can do to help, we would be appreciated. You will not be disappointed. Thanks, Todd, for your inspiring words. We appreciate all that you do to serve our friends at the Church for All People. There are many ways you can help with this meal. Although the number of servers limited this year, the need for food items is greater than ever. And we are asking for your help to provide the ingredients for the Thanksgiving dinner. Our biggest need this year is for you to cook a turkey at home, just like you would for your own family. In order to serve approximately 500 people, we are needing 21 turkeys this year. We ask that you cook the turkey, carve it, then deliver it hot to Jerome Church on Monday, November 22nd, between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. In addition, other perishable and non-perishable items such as rolls, 
pies, canned corn, and other items which can be dropped off at Jerome all days and times provided in the sign-up. To sign up for a turkey or other food items, click on the Thanksgiving dinner link in the Church Center app or on our website to see the available options. Some other items can be easily purchased at any local grocery store, shopping in store or online or pickup or delivery. I hope that you will add a few items to your shopping list this next few weeks to provide items for our friends at Church for All People. Let's make a memorable meal for them to remember for a lifetime from Jerome Church. Thank you for your continued support. Thanks, Michelle and Todd. You can scan the QR code on the screen or find the sign-up link in your Church Center app or in today's video links. Non-perishable items can be dropped off to Jerome Church anytime before November 20th. Earlier is better. And perishable and cooked items will have drop-off instructions listed in the online sign-up. If you're worshiping with us from outside of the local Plain City and Dublin area, we want to invite you to participate by making a donation to this meal by selecting Church for All People when you give online, or you can purchase items online and have them shipped directly to Jerome Church at the address on the screen below. Together, the people of Jerome Church are living the mission of loving God and loving people through the life-changing missions and ministries of this church, like our small group ministry and our partnership with the Church for All People. You can join in this ongoing work by giving a financial offering today. You can give electronically through the Give tab in the Church Center app, or if you are giving for the first time, you can text the word GIVE to 614 587 7871. Giving is also available through ACH or Bill Pay, or you can mail a check to Jerome Church at the address below. Let's now close our time of worship today as our musicians lead us in our closing song of worship. a wonderful time of worship together and I want to say thank you for making this worship time a part of your week whether you are joining us live on Sunday morning or watching later on demand. If you didn't have the opportunity to participate in a small group during this graceful study I want to encourage you to find the resources on Amplify Media and continue learning about God's grace for all of us. At the conclusion of today's worship service you'll see a video with information about Amplify Media and how you can create a free account to access this on-demand video platform for the graceful study and for your own personal growth and discipleship. 
You can use this resource as a part of a group or on your own to do the graceful study. We look forward to continuing to support you as you hear God's voice and say yes to new opportunities to love God, love people, and grow as a disciple of Jesus. Have a blessed week, friends. I'm Sarah Merriweather, the Executive Director here at Jerome Church, and I'm excited to share a resource with you called Amplify Media. Amplify is a streaming, on-demand video resource platform for discipleship and spiritual growth resources and is available to the entire congregation as a resource for you to use in your small groups and personal study. This resource is completely free to you. Everyone with an access code can access all of the video resources on Amplify at any time on their smart TV, computer, or on their phone through the Amplify app. Whether your group is meeting in person, virtually, or in a hybrid format, we hope that this resource will give you and your small group or class greater flexibility and more options on ways to do studies together. Your first step to accessing all that Amplify has to offer is to create your free account. The Jerome Church Amplify channel address is my.amplifymedia.com slash Jerome Church Plain City OH. You can also find easy access to the link in the Church Center app and on the Jerome Church website. Amplify will ask if you have your Amplify access code and you can click to enter your Jerome Church access code, which is SJYTPK. You can then enter your name email information, and create a password to log in to your account and access all of the Amplify resources. Amplify is home to thousands of videos that will allow you to explore and grow your faith, including the video resources for our All Church Studies, Pastor Studies, and all of our classes. This platform has videos for adult studies, small groups, worship, and more. There is also content geared towards students and children to help them grow in their faith as well. It's very easy to use Amplify for your small group or for your personal learning and devotional time. Amplify media resources can be accessed and watched anytime on almost any device. In addition to accessing on your computer, you can also access Amplify media content on your smart TV through the Amplify media app for Roku and Fire TV and on your Android or iOS devices with the Amplify media app. We are so excited to be able to share this streaming service and all of these resources with you and are looking forward to learning this new way to live and grow together in Christian community. Mm -hmm.